we're using the wooden ramp just as a support and we're going to use it as a support for a curved end ramp in a way that I'll show you in a second. We first level the wooden ramp. This isn't exactly level, but I'm not going to worry about that for the purposes of the demonstration. Now, the curved end ramp, if it's laid on the wooden ramp, of course, has the curved end pointing upward. If we press down on that curved end so that the very end is parallel to this ramp, then the rest of the ramp will raise up. Now, I've got some, a stack of papers back here. And I'm going to use that stack of papers to support the curved end ramp and excuse me while I get killed here in the lab um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to if I place the uh, ball on the ramp it's got a potential energy at this point that's greater than the potential energy at this point. If I release the ball, the potential energy converts to kinetic, or at least some of it converts to kinetic, and the ball goes off the end of the ramp and follows a parabolic path down to whatever is at this level. Okay, so when the ball leaves here, we say it's become a projectile. It's projected from the end of the ramp, now it's falling freely under the influence of gravity, but it has a horizontal velocity. It came off of the end of this ramp, moving in a horizontal direction. And if it wasn't for gravity, it would have continued in a horizontal direction. Now gravity exerts a force that accelerates it downward as it continues moving horizontally. And again, you can see the result of that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a meter stick up here. And using the meter stick, I'm going to start the ball at a position 20 centimeters from its end. I'm going to let it roll and fall down to the table. Now on the table there's a piece of carbon paper face down on top of another piece of paper. I'd be careful to, I will be careful to position a piece of paper on the floor that's going to be marked when the ball hits the carbon paper uh, with respect to some fixed point, in this case the edge of this uh, cassette holder that's uh, supporting the ramp. So that when I release this thing from the 20 centimeter position it makes a mark right about here. Then I release it from the 30 centimeter position, 30 centimeters from the end of the ramp, and let it make a mark. And then 40 centimeters. Now you can probably see that it's falling further out every time because it comes off with a greater and greater horizontal velocity. There are two things that we're interested in. We're interested in how far the ball goes for a given uh, release point, and we're interested in how much the altitude of the ball changes because, of course, that's going to tell us how our potential energy changes. So I measure the height of the edge of the ramp at this point then at the 20 centimeter point, so I see how far the ball has dropped. And from that I'll be able to determine something about how the potential energy changed from this point to this point. Then I measure the height of the edge of the ramp at the 30 and the 40 centimeter point, so that I obtain a set of data. And that set of data is going to tell me the change in the altitude of the ball from the initial point to the end of the ramp. And it's also going to tell me how far the ball went after it went off the edge of the ramp. Now, one more thing I do is I drop the ball right from the edge of the ramp, making another mark, so I have a point of reference to see how far the ball actually traveled as a result of its horizontal velocity.